Narshan, very warm welcome to each one of you. Uh, today is a very special day for all of us uh, because um, on one hand we are only recognizing uh, the pioneer uh, in Sanskrit teaching in Thailand. Uh, and secondly, uh, this is also very significant day for us in the Pasi because uh, today we are launching a flagship initiative of the Indian Pasi to start India Ireland flagship lecture series. And uh, we couldn't have found a more uh, distinguished person to inaugurate it with us uh, with this initiative. The idea behind this India Ireland friendship uh, lecture series is to create a platform for sharing and dialogue between people of India and the people of Ireland. Uh, yesterday itself we celebrated the uh, birth industry of Ayurveda. And we remembered uh, the deep friendship, dialogue, conversation, and mutual inspiration, mutual admiration, and solidarity that was displayed by WBH's uh, Indian visitors uh, in that area. And uh, the more I think about that relationship, uh, uh, the WBH not only wrote the introduction of Gitanjali, but also he really worked very hard to promote and disseminate the work, the novelty of the work of Ravindar Tagore in the British and uh, global and European literary circles. And that without the background work, lobbying and uh, dissemination uh, done by the WBAs, I doubt if Tagore would have got that visibility and got Nobel Prize in 1920. And this really strikes me that uh, for someone uh, who had to wait for 10 years, uh, W.B. Yates got Nobel Prize in 20, uh, 1923. Uh, to, to do that kind of work for a fellow uh, Indian, this is a very profound message. Similarly, if you look at the India Island People People Connectivity, the role of Amy Besant or Margaret Noble and Margaret Cousins, they left their relatively comfortable lives in the West and went to India, struggled to and dust and mud and heat and rain of India. And they made huge contribution in awakening social consciousness, political consciousness, based on the experiments which were going on in, in Ireland, to gain independence and mobilize people in India for a worthwhile cause. So as we are celebrating 75 years of India's independence and uh, 100 years of Ireland's uh, independence, so I think this is a historic milestone for both our countries. And as India is a representative in Ireland, uh, I'm preparing for kind of 25 years strategic plan for India and Ireland's relationship. And I definitely want to revive that 100 year old spirit of sharing and caring and supporting, learning from each other. The Indian constitution, uh, when it was being drafted, they used a lot of very valuable inputs from Irish legal experts, including Prasim Devaraj input. But that is the spirit we need today. That is the spirit uh, on which our next 25 years of partnership has to be built. We, so this is the idea. And also, uh, Post-COVID, we are all more comfortable in using the digital media, digital platform to share ideas, connect and uh, uh, learn from each other. So I wish to use this lecture series virtually in a kind of hybrid mode. We would be honored to welcome uh, distinguished scholars from Ireland to come and bless us with their thoughts and ideas. Idea. But it will be largely promoted through social media. And we want that message uh, of the wonderful story of Ireland to be reaching to every corner, every province of India. And in terms of thematic focus, uh, I can share with you like three or four main clusters. Uh, one is uh, uh, the art and culture and literature and uh, creative industries in which Ireland is a global player. And that had captured the imagination of India uh, hundred years ago. Uh, the poetry, literature, creativity, films, uh, ideas uh, of women empowerment, of home rule, and 
peaceful uh, campaign for independence. Uh, it's this movement of ideas which have created the foundation. The, 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 the contemporary India and Argan have a lot to share and learn from each other in terms of creative ideas. Poetry, literature, drama, theatre, folklore. Is a, the one, this cluster is very important for women of grassroots level ideas of women. Second area is uh, very important to me is uh, the governance. Uh, so far, the relationship between India and Ireland is very narrow, I'm afraid. It's largely focused between, like, I today, three nine commun communication, nine connecting Department of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That is a uh, shame to be narrow. That has to change. Uh, we need to have much broader connectivity and sharing and dialogue and conversation between all ministries of government of Ireland and corresponding ministries in uh, government of India and also the state governments. A third component is uh, India is not Delhi and Ireland is not. And I am representative of whole of India to whole of Ireland. So therefore, I wish to really focus and learn about the wonderful creativity, innovation and vibrancy of not only Dublin area, but also all other counties, all other cities. So I wish to also have a greater dissemination of regional success stories, positive narratives emanating from Ireland in different sectors and disseminate it as widely as possible in India. A uh, fourth is uh, uh, actually P2P business related. Uh, I look at India and Ireland, uh, we both are extremely vibrant uh, economy. Ireland is uh, the fastest growing European economy. Uh, India is uh, the fastest growing economy, fastest growing G20 economy. Uh, uh, and uh, the unique strengths that we have made in uh, IT, in biotech, and pharma, and vaccines, and uh, uh, cyber issues, agricultural technology, or entertainment. So we both have complementary strengths in business. I really wish uh, to use this platform also to share success stories and trigger a deeper dialogue and consultation between India and Ireland. Uh, so that is the uh, uh, vision and mission behind the uh, India Ireland friendship respectively. Uh, why we chose the Sanskrit uh, to launch this? Uh, like one, one secret is that uh, Rutgerji is uh, my dear friend even before I became a pastor. So he, I, you are my really first friend based in Dublin. Uh, and also, uh, uh, Sanskrit to me, again, I'm partial because my father is a professor of Sanskrit, so again, forgive me if I'm a bit biased. But even as an Indian, I know that Sanskrit is very, very critical for India's uh, history and culture and philosophy. Uh, uh, it's not just a medium. Uh, in, in the common sense, language is uh, considered as an instrument to convey ideas, convey uh, thoughts. And as an like, instrument to convey. Sanskrit is not merely an instrument. Huh? Sanskrit is the message. Sanskrit is, uh, in India they say, the, the, uh, Sans Sanskrit is called Devani. Vani, Vani uh, 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 is called Vaj. And Vaj, wa Vaj is, uh, is Brahma. Vaj, Vai Brahma. And that Brahma is itself the entirety, infinitude of knowledge, consciousness, and happiness. And to, to gain access to that infinitude of wisdom, which is represented by the speech, that, that divine speech of Devani, uh, our common senses, uh, the organs of speech or eyes or ears, they are not adequate. Uh, in India, we are saying that Paranji Khani Vyatra Soyambhu Matasmat Parang Pashyati Nantaratma. It means that the nature, the Almighty, has created our senses extrovert in nature. Uh, 
Huh? Like eyes can only see what lies outside. Ears can hear only what lies outside. The skin can feel only what is outside of it. And therefore it has limitations. If you really want to expand your knowledge, your, your vision, then you have to close it. Avritta Chakshusha, you have to close your eyes and turn them inwards. And what happens if you turn your vision inwards? Yavan vai ayam akasha tavan esha rai akasha ubhe dyava prithidi esha antare. It means this vast gigantic space uh, that is outside, that is also within me. Both earth and heaven and sky, both are within me. With that inward vision profoundly changes the appreciation. There is a deep interconnection and unity established between the world within human being, inside, and the world outside. And, and this is extremely funda fundamental in how we evolve. Because if we are focused on externals, then the world is so diverse, there is so much of contradiction and conflict. But if you look within and have a deeper knowledge beneath the surface, you find a very supreme, pervasive harmony. There is deep interconnectedness, there is deep uh, uh, thread which weaves everything and also interdependence, uh, interconnectedness. Uh, the entire cosmic existence within the body and also outside the body. It's all like a universal cosmic web. In that web, not only all human beings are connected like nodes, but everything that exists. Uh, plants, animals, birds. So that, then you all feel that we are one. Then you don't see that there is a conflict, there is a duality. And that is the secret of the ethos of India, uh, why, uh, why, why we see nature, why we see uh, plants, why we see birds and animals and other human beings as part of a bigger family. Now Vasudhaim Kutrapakam has become a cliche, we have lost the meaning, but uh, that is the spirit. That inward vision has given us this not belief, not blind belief a deep understanding of our interconnected existence and, and fundamental unity, equality, despite the external incredible diversity and plurality. Second aspect is that unlike most other languages, uh, Sanskrit does not create words based on conventional usage. Uh, like in, in in English, uh, you, you use C-O-W to represent an animal. Why is this sound used to designate an animal? There is no rationale. It just happens. Huh? E-A-R-T-H, uh, you use this to designate this planet. Why you do it? There is no rationale. But it's in Sanskrit, every word is crafted, every word is envisioned based on deep insight. Uh, like uh, you call this earth uh, Prithvi because the root word is Prith, Prith means spread out, vast. Uh, you, it is also called Bhu because things happen here. It is also called Bhumi because here Udbhavati, uh, the things grow here. That is also called Dhartri because it sustains whole things. Every word in Sanskrit is not just a conventional that I use this uh, for that. Uh, it is based on a deeper vision. Uh, understanding of the quality attributes of what we see. And, and again, it might appear very like simple thing, but it has an enormous impact on our thought process. Because every single object has infinite attributes. Uh, like I am at the same time father, I am a child, I am a grandfather and also a grandchild. The, the, the same individual can have countless descriptions. 
Similarly, no single attribute is a personal property fiefdom of any single object. The one property that is not exclusively belonging to me. So that is the real secret of how India takes that unity and diversity, not as a kind of rhetoric, but a genuine PDF. That is the sustainer of India's diversity, incredible diversity. And that is why on this conceptual framework, uh, every wave of humanity, every wave of ideas that has come to India has found a willing acceptance. And that is why this root of Sanskrit needs to be preserved, needs to be revived. And uh, today we may not speak Sanskrit as fluently as uh, Kendi does. Uh, uh, and also in India we have that taking distance. But this is so fundamental because unlike any other regional language of India, Sanskrit is not confined to one particular state or one particular region. But at the same time, Sanskrit is a language which has deepest of impact and influence on every part of India. Its literature, its poetry, its dance, its music, uh, its philosophical ethos, its drama. So in our daily life, it has been shaped by the content of Sanskrit. Also, it is Sanskrit which has influenced the rest of the world as far as perception of India is concerned. Including great words like uh, everything. And that is why, friends, uh, not only as an individual, but also as an ambassador, I have tremendous gratitude for the lifelong sacrifice that Rutgerji has made in keeping this flame alive. Uh, more than three decades of uh, trial to keep this light on and, and uh, cheering the younger generation to keep interest in this language. And uh, this language, it may not give commercial opportunities to young students, but it opens a lot of new windows, uh, doors to individual fulfillment and also to deeper understanding of India, and deeper understanding of our humanity, our civilization, our nature. And that is why we are so deeply grateful to you uh, for what you are doing. And Government of India and ICCR are truly privileged to bestow that. And as a master, I'm, yeah, it has a, uh, I have a deep honor and privilege and uh, joy to invite you to share your thoughts. Thank you.